Courage the Cowardly Dog is a show that ran on Cartoon Network from 1999 to 2002. For over 20 years, it has remained steadfast as one of my all-time favorite shows. I love this show, and thought that raining the villains would be a fun jaunt here in the middle of YouTube. The things I do for love. Let's get started. King of Flan. Sorry dude, I'm not really into villains with a feeder fetish. Maybe you're looking for a cutie pie SSBBW to take you home for the night on a, on a mobile scooter, but the only thing that I'm looking for is to be traumatized as a child, and not for some horribly unhealthy fetish to be implanted in my brain. Two out of ten. Mattress Demon. I mean, dang, I'm already afraid of oversleeping as it is. Now you're telling me that going to bed will get me possessed by a horrible green ghost and I'll never be able to sleep? I mean, is Muriel asleep while possessed by it? Do you think I could get it to edit videos for me while I sleep inside? Do like a double work shift? Of course I'd have to think about the strain on my body and all that, and how good it would be, but I bet a goat or two a week would appease it. 8 out of 10. Kitty. I mean, Kitty is one of those characters that once again isn't really a villain, she just doesn't trust dogs because the hot dog that is Mad Dog has her friend. Bunny. However, this video wouldn't be right if I forgot Kitty's iconic mask, because wow. I'd feel lion if I said that wouldn't scare me if I was alone in some dark alleyway somewhere and I was also a purple dog. 7 out of 10. Big Toe. You wanna lick that foot, don't you? You do, don't you? Ew, you sick freak. I bet you have gigabytes of this purple foot freak and you can't help it. This is a villain so weak it couldn't even knock over a bank. Who am I to be afraid of a little foot vor? 1 out of 10. Weasel. Probably a demon's familiar? It's never really explained, he's just a creepy little goblin. I bet if they sold backpacks of Weasel, then tons of people would buy it at Hot Topic back in 2005 to 2007. 7 out of 10. William. He's just a little confused. He wants to eat people, but fish is better for him. I mean, you look at this guy and he just screams aquatic dragon. He's got flippers, of course he loves fish. Don't get mad at me for dragon profiling, by the way. He loves fish. 5 out of 10. Trolls. Grimy boys with cool clubs. That's a weapon you can count on. 7 out of 10. Valkyries. Crush me. 8 out of 10. The Spirit of the Harvest Moon. Yeah, okay, I want some bald white head to tell me to grow plants in my house all day. Someone's definitely into this, but it isn't me. Imagine rooming with this dude. He would be the kind of guy who talks about his houseplants all day. I don't mind a little houseplant talk, but keep it to a minimum of 30 to 40 minutes, please. 4 out of 10. The precious, wonderful, adorable, lovable duckling. God... I'm glad that they send this thing to the moon. I can't stand when it says, MAMA! And I also can't stand that it loves Eustace of all people. Probably the worst bird-based villain. And please, never come back. 1 out of 10. Fissionary. Fissionary. Fission is scary. This fish could start a revolution, pollute the airwaves. Candy wrappers and wrappers named after candy aside, this fish looks like she's going to tell me about her great new startup and then try to sell me smelly wax cubes or overpriced makeup that I don't need. I can't afford your pyramid scheme, Miss Fish. I don't have enough sea dollars. 3 out of 10. Mad Dog. Look, I'm not a furry. I'm not a furry, but Mad Dog? <sighs> Mad Dog's kind of hot. I mean, he's the kind of guy who will yell at you for interrupting his game of Madden. But I'm not going to deny that people are into bad boys. He's a genuine bad boy. 6 out of 10. The McPherson Phantom. Honestly, who doesn't love a classic ghoul, a funny, scary little ghost? I mean, Gengar, whatever. It's a purple ghost. I don't give a goddamn about Gengar. This is my shit. This is my kind of ghost. This strikes fear into my goddamn heart, and if it's scaring me, it's scaring every kitty in child town. 9 out of 10. Clyde the Fog Spirit. Yeah, there was a 2013-2014 revival of Courage that was going to be CGI, but they only made one episode. This was the villain from that episode or segment. I did not like CGI Courage. It's unfortunate that the voice actor for Eustace could not compete with the late Lionel Wilson or the late Arthur Anderson, and it just doesn't feel the same. The villain is a goober who loves his wife too much. The Vape Cloud Simp. 2 out of 10. Windmill Vandals. These guys are just confused. Much like Don Quixote attacked windmills because he thought they were dragons, these guys attack windmills because they're as greedy as dragons. Water is money. Invest in water. 4 out of 10. Dr. Zaylost. I mean, the dude's just really sad. He just wants to be happy. If plums make him happy, then I'm happy for him. I wish eating a nice plum solved all my emotional problems. 
But it'd probably take a whole hell of a lot of plums to fill that void. Six out of ten. Rat. This is Dr. Zalos' system. It's wonderful. Ten out of ten. Hard drive virus. This is kind of cold, man. He just needs some nice soup and he'll calm down. We're all a little irrational when we're sick. It happens. What a nice bunch of ones and zeros, though, really. Five out of ten. Robot Randy. A tale as old as time. Christopher Walken Robot wants to whittle, but instead his family wants him to follow their dreams. Their dreams of destroying and enslaving civilizations. Which, I mean, it's a lofty goal. And Randy really is a nice guy at heart. His hands also look like those little claw grippies that you use to pick things up that are too far away. I should buy like two of those and have clamp arms. I could do like a Robot Randy cosplay. 6.5 out of 10. Banana people. I mean, they're really only villains for a little bit. They get better. I, I, I would like these more if I, I wasn't already cursed by someone who wore a banana once. And that is someone I'd never like to think about ever again. I am not a banana. 4 out of 10. Monkey. Since we just talked about the bananas, this is the real villain of that episode. As much as I do love Monkey, this is one monkey that I would not want to pat on the head. I mean, he's going to steal my credit card and then absolutely spend my entire limit purchasing Roblox stock. 3 out of 10. King Kong. This is one crusty monkey that I think Godzilla could absolutely crush. A bear could immediately take this monkey downtown into pain town. I mean, a bear could beat any gorilla, anyway. But this is one that wouldn't even put up much of a fight. No, the gorilla cannot have a gun to fight the bear. One out of ten. Evil plants. No, not the evil eggplants or the evil carrots. Just evil plants in general. I mean, plants are delicious. You make them evil and then you're just taking the nutrition out of them. That's really all they got going for them. I don't eat them for the taste. Two out of ten. Eliza and Eliza Stitch. Okay, I'm not into quilts or anything, but the thought of two ladies stitched together that want to stitch me into their quilt of nightmares it's one of those things that makes me, uh, think about being put into a blanket and losing all my memories, trapped forever in a sea of other doomed souls. That might be a big fear for me. It may be that, or it may be just my fear of commitment. 7 out of 10. Goose God. When a goose god loves a woman, a goose god makes that sound. You, you know the one. That honk. That horrible, horrible honk. Alright, let's get it out of the way. This dude fucks a truck. He's built like a brick shit house, but he definitely banged a truck. 3.1 out of 10. Cajun Fox. I'll be honest, he's a smooth talker, but I'm not down with dudes who try to eat grandmas. I love my grandmas. Neither of my grandmas are gonna match this guy on Bayou Tinder. I hate this guy, and I'm glad he was eaten. That's right, I'm happy this non-Five Nights at Freddy's animal was eaten alive. I'm sure you can find something like that on the Letters and Numbers website, but I'm not going to be the one to send you there. 4 out of 10. The Snowman. Hats don't bring snowmen to life. Science brings snowmen to life. Not really evil, but still a villain. More of sorrow than anything else. I mean, if all my friends and family melted, I would do anything to try to stop it or bring it back. I'd probably be a dick too. 5 out of 10. Gerhardt's House. Yeah, this is just Monster House. I love Monster House. 7.8 out of 10. Mecha Courage. You know, in Yakuza 7, you fight a giant Roomba once or twice. That's right. Yakuza 7 has a giant Roomba boss battle. Mecha Courage is okay, though I guess he got beaten by Courage, and let's be honest, if God himself came from Muriel, Courage could beat him too. You tried your best, Purple Roomba, but ashes to ashes, dust busters to dust. 6 out of 10. The Ulcer. Ah, oh, this is going to be me in five years, isn't it? This is gonna be me in just five short years. <laughs> Three out of ten. Sandman. If Eustace pursued a theater degree and watched way too much Rise of the Guardians. Four out of ten. Evil Carrot. Grow, expand, explode, huh? Really, this show has so much secret fetish fuel, it's scary. Two out of ten. The Government. Yeah, I consider the government to be a villain in Courage. They're incompetent and are constantly causing strife in nowhere. I'm glad they're just made up and don't exist in real life. 1 out of 10. Monks. Moderators for our atheism. Does the narwhal bacon at midnight, guys? Ha <laughs> ha Redditors. 0 out of 10. The Cruel Veterinarian. I don't know why your plan was just launching dogs into space to breed space dogs. I don't know what you'd gain from creating space dogs. The Air Buddies went into space and space buddies and all they did was go to the moon for a bit and get into wacky hijinks. 
I don't think that wacky hijinks is going to further any of your research, and I'm glad that Courage's parents beat you up. One out of ten. Dr. Gerbil. That bop is still stuck in my head all these years later. Dr. Gerbil himself, uh, he's just a animal testing products out on humans. A twisted version of reality, and his creations make some really weird stuff happen. You know that guy that's really into knee inflation? I can't help but wonder if this episode with its exploding armpits helped activate some neurons. 5 out of 10. Wermole. Give him enough dirt and an all-you-can-eat flesh buffet and he wouldn't be so bad. Aside from the, like, turning other people into wermoles thing. 3 out of 10. Perfectionist. You. You're the one that gave me the blue demon of my nightmares. You did this. You created a cavern within my mind that constantly reminds me that I am not perfect. I will never be perfect. Though comforting for some, I find myself lost in thought often. What if I could be perfect? What if I was able to become more than a man but a mind? What if I could become an idea? Would I be perfect then? This one gets a perfect zero out of ten. Old rich guy. I mean, he wasn't really a villain, but I guess by some standards he is. I mean, he's rich. We eat the rich here. Two dollars and nine cents out of ten. Old rich guy's shadow. He didn't know any better. He was just an unhappy dude who didn't know his place in life. For some reason, he separates from his shadow dad? Host? I don't know what you call it, but after the rich old guy, rich old dies, then he really just goofs on people until courage helps him become a real star shadow. That's great! 10 out of 10. Swamp Monster. Another dude just sipping for his wife. 1 out of 10. Mondo. This is one of my least favorite villains, because really... This dude turns Muriel into a monster. What an absolute tool. Catch him wearing tap-out t-shirts and pirating UFC pay-per-views with his friends in Discord. He is really visually distinct, though. Like a shriveled-up Bowser. 3 out of 10. Duck Brothers. Mad that they lay eggs even though they're brothers. They sound like Ringo. The most famous bug-based musician. Really, all they want to do is rescue their bro, and that's, that's an admirable. I'd mind control an old lady for my brother. Probably. 5 out of 10. Velvet Vic. Fit. Look at that fit. You couldn't look good in a suit like that. Just be careful with burly Conan O'Brien here. If you don't want to live inside his vinyl, don't play piano with him. If you melted his magic record down into a Funko Pop, do you think he'd be able to animate it? Think you'd have to deal with a Chucky situation wherein you're fighting off waves of possessed Funko Pop vinyls? Disgusting. Six out of ten. Space Chicken. The inaugural Courage villain from the original What A Cartoon short. The only problem I had with the space chicken was that it sets up a villain routine quite common in Courage, which is, Yo, what if this dude wanted to turn everybody else into like him? Would that be fucked up or what? Which can be effective once or twice, but in Courage it just happens in like three or four times. A little much, but I do like the chicken. Eight out of ten. Space chicken son. Dork. Your dad was turned into a delicious dinner meal and still tried to kill Courage. Whatever, nerds. You, you go take a photography class if you can't do what your mom tells you to do. Can't commit a little basic homicide. 7 out of 10. Sand Whale. The next Weird Al Yankovic. Or should I say, Whale Al Yankovic. You know, we can get it because he wants his, his accordion back. Weird Al Yankovic plays an accordion, you get it? Alright, Sand Sharks are scarier. 2 out of 10. Little Muriel. Oh, God. I mean, you could maybe consider the Time Tornado the villain of this episode, but I, I don't think so. It's Little Muriel. I hate Little Muriel. This one's really for the parents out there. Kids can be demanding sometimes, and they work through it to become sweet old ladies like Muriel. Well, sometimes. Sometimes people can get worse. If I had an opportunity, I'd kick little Muriel like a football. I, I don't even care. Three out of ten. Basil. A confused burglar. I love Basil's design so much. Like if the Hamburglar was stung by a bee. Eight out of ten. The Captain. I ain't one for pirates, but Peg Leg should come back in style. This villain is one of the macho dudes who looks like the policeman. I'm assuming there's a very long family tree that would strangely have a half-man, half-vending machine in it. Four out of ten. King Buffo. It's just disgusting. We don't talk about frogs on this channel. We don't do it. All I'm gonna say is this guy's a bit too demanding and overbearing. However, he gets a happy ending. He gets to be a, a baseball player, I, I guess. Huh. One out of ten. King Buffo's advisor. <laughs> Nerd. Zero out of ten. Bluff. Oh god, okay, why'd they have to make the frog buff? 8 out of 10. Alien Brain Boss. This guy looks like Duke Nukem should come out and kick his gum and chew his ass. I mean, if I looked like a butt-ugly Martian melted in the sun, I'd be pretty mad too, honestly. 
Three out of ten. Computer. Yeah, I'm counting the computer. Anyone that mean to courage is a villain in my book. What kind of a dick do you gotta be? You're already a sentient machine that has access to a repository of knowledge and you gotta use it to belittle a dog? Really? Grow up, dude. 1.1 out of 10. Fusili? Is a JoJo villain? That's Terrence Darby. How now, brown cow? That's a baseball. 3 out of 10. Box demon. God, after watching this episode, I couldn't open up any boxes for the fear of giant hands coming out to duel me, much like the Master Hand character from Super Smash Brothers. For sooth gamers, these hands are hungry. 5 out of 10. Mayan Baker. He's just mad that he got framed for stealing cookies. Really, he's a nice guy at heart. I would try his cookies, and I would not get mad at him. I promise. 6 out of 10. Lequack. All right, Lequack. One of the big boys, Lequack suffers from his own ego. He could always be around the corner there to steal your wallet or your life savings. A true conman who always gets away, justice never truly served. If they brought courage back and didn't have Lequack, then I would be Lequacked. Out of all the bird-based villains that there are, this one serves as the absolute best. A villain most foul. 10 out of 10, Jeeves Weevil. Yo, you ever see that movie where Jeff Goldblum turns into a fly man? No? Oh, this is nothing like that. This dude's a dapper. I almost said this dude's a diaper. This dude is dapper, but remember, boys and girls, just because he's polite doesn't mean that he's not sucking the life force out of your body. Also, he's a weevil. That's like a Pokemon, right? Five out of ten. Maria and Mono Ladrones. Maria is a lady that looks kind of like Muriel and Mono is a hand. You see, it's funny because Mono is Spanish for hand. They steal a diamond or whatever. I, I didn't really care for this episode of the villains in it, and gotta be honest, the middle of nowhere needs a better police force. Two out of ten. Storm Goddess. I mean, she cute. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you about that. I'm just gonna say that she has a mighty temper. And if she's mad about the Burger King getting her order of chicken fries wrong, then she may destroy the town. Just needs a dog to talk to, I guess, and then she's fine. Five out of ten. Big Bayou. You know, I think Courage hates Southerners. I hate snakes. You know, when I was a kid, I helped my great-grandfather kill garter snakes that came into his backyard. We had a scoreboard and everything. I also don't like a dude who can use his shed snake skin and animate it with his magic. I'm not one to like flesh wizards. His hat's cool, though. Two out of ten. Black Puddle Queen. God, I wish they just let her eat Eustace. He doesn't really do anything for Muriel. All he does is fail at farming and eat dinner, and man, if I could have one character eaten in this show, it would be him. Courage doesn't really even save him because he cares about him. Courage saves him because Muriel cares. The episode this villain was in made me afraid of any puddles for years to come, and honestly, I still avoid puddles whenever I can. 9 out of 10. Conway. A filthy, disgusting, 193-year-old man that wants you to lay in his sludge. Because the sludge will make you live longer. Listen to me, sludge and trash will not make you live longer. It will kill you, or at the very least, get you onto an episode of Hoarders. So I beg of you, please, take a shower and brush your teeth. Conway's way of living only works for him. He's a disgusting sludge boy, and I don't want that life for you. 3 out of 10. Otto. Dick. 0 out of 10. D. Lung. Everyone knows a guy like this, and everyone hates the guy that they know that's like this. Cocky, and he thinks he's better than everyone. We're all just mad because our dads didn't leave us an inheritance. Okay, yeah, okay, rich boy, you're the fool. Two out of ten. Aishen. She helps give D-Lung a little bit more depth, but she's hungry for bones. I don't think I like a villain who's hungry for bones. I don't know if that's my go-to for anything. Maybe I should run a D&D campaign where the main antagonist is just hungry for bones to understand Aishen more. Three out of ten. Cats. What can you say? about Cats. He's evil, diabolical, and wonderful. Cats is an icon, a villain's villain. He loves squash, turning people into objects, and making delicious candy. I was a bit of a weird kid. I always rooted for cats. Though I am a cat person, and cats are already kind of inherently evil. Nothing good poops in a box. And I say that as like a cat lover. 10 out of 10. Cats is spiders. Bowling balls filled with hatred. 5.7 out of 10. Cats is jam monster. Goo. Two. John Bond. Only a villain to courage. A nice pig man who wants to make good burgers. Unfortunately, a dog sees only what it wants to see. And let me tell you, this is a man that I would like a burger from. What a great dude. 9 out of 10. Fred. Okay, Fred. His monologue is one of my main inspirations for doing anything. 
which is to say that I like that it rhymes and that it sounds sinister. I don't idolize the haircutting psychopath or anything. It's just his rhyming inner monologue about being naughty really captured me as a kid before I had access to anything other than watching the, you know, the old boob tube, the titty box. Something about the way that he walks, the way that he talks, the way that his face disintegrates into chalk. 10 out of 10. King Ghidorah. Yeah, he's just in Courage. He's just in Courage. When Courage goes to the city, Courage opens the door and King Ghidorah's there, and I'm just counting him so I can talk about King Ghidorah. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason I made this video, to talk about King Ghidorah in a Courage the Cowardly Dog video. That's it. Fake fan. Fake fan. Can't even say King Ghidorah. Is it Ghidorah or Ghidorah? I don't know. I don't know. Actually. 10 out of 10. Eustace. Look. Eustace is a villain. He's a bastard and the main source of pain for Courage. Eustace's character grows and regresses. He scares Courage almost every episode with his wacky mask. He gets involved in feeder fetish situations not once, but twice. I just can't like Eustace. I hate him. It's effective. You're supposed to hate Eustace, but that's what makes him the greatest, if not the best, villain of this series. He's one of the only characters that you can hate and sympathize with as time goes on. Falling victim to his greed time and time again helps make us love the show even more. Eustace isn't just a staple villain, he's THE villain. 11 out of 10. The Whip. That's Green Cowboy Eustace, 3 out of 10. Mr. Nasty. What if Eustace was purple? 6 out of 10. Schwick. Known as Schwick. Don't call him Bushwick. He's from Bushwick, but his name is Schwick. He's a cockroach with a monster that lives in a hole. The fact that he's a cockroach gives him an immediate no from me. I like the episode he's in, but only for the sweet sitar music and uh, King Ghidorah. 2 out of 10. Benton Tarantella. Really just, well, you know, something is really afoot with this guy. I was surprised when they brought him back after the, you know, after he went back into the hole with his partner. Really just an artistic zombie, and that's fine. His his voice gives you goose pimples. Like, ugh, what a creep. It works wonderfully for a character that's basically undead number 3241. 5 out of 10. Errol Van Volkheim. This is Benton's partner. Not much to say about him. He's just a zombie that appears at the end of Benton's first episode. 2 out of 10. Bobby Ganoush. Yo, if I didn't hate Eggplant before, I sure do hate it now. 0 out of 10. Ratatouille. Yeah, that's his name. Still an eggplant. 0 out of 10. Jojo. Idiot dolphin. If you're lame enough to be beaten by Eustace, then you're better off being packaged in a can of tuna. Only to be eaten right out of the can by an egomaniacal filmmaker. 3 out of 10. Dolphin Trainer, the ultimate Chad, 10 out of 10. Ma Bag, Eustace's mom. Weirdly enough, one of the only villains to like courage. She just hates her son and hates that she's bald. Her episodes are always all right, but she looks like the Bigfoot's mom. Probably my least favorite reoccurring villain. 2 out of 10. Cat Thieves, the guys that lead us to... Oh God, I gotta talk about him, don't I? <laughs> oh, Cat Thieves get a 3 out of 10. King Ramses. I know that just editing this in is going to give me an anxiety attack. This is probably the only villain encouraged to scare me well into my teen and maybe even adult years. I still have trouble watching this episode because of this weird mix of Uncanny Valley meets that ASMR feeling. King Ramses is genuinely frightening, and I can't wait to watch these with my kids so they can be scared for life as well. A hundred out of ten. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos. There are also things. If I missed a villain or a character that you thought was a villain in Courage, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your favorite character from Courage the Cowardly Dog and uh, make fun of me for being bad at making videos or whatever you're going to do. If you want to see me arbitrarily rating things more, saying stuff about them, check out my Scooby-Doo video or Minecraft video. If you want more Brent Daniel, then I'm often streaming on Twitch saying dumb things about video games. I also have a Patreon or whatever. Okay, I'm going to go now. <laughs> I tried to do like the courage laugh and I don't, I don't know if that like did well the video's still going ain't it okay bye